Stuart Butchart, Chief Scientist at BirdLife International. BirdLife is unique in the degree to which science underpins all that we do. We compile information on all of the world's birds to assess their extinction risk for the IUCN Red List, and this helps set priorities for which species require action most urgently. In 2004, we brought together information from the Red List and from our Important Bird and Biodiversity Area program to summarise what birds tell us about the state of the planet, the pressures upon it, and the solutions in place and needed. And State of the World's Birds, as we called that report, has become BirdLife's flagship scientific report, and 2022 sees us publishing the fifth edition. I'm Rob Martin, I'm the Senior Red List Officer at BirdLife International. The Red List is a way of assessing the extinction risk of virtually all species. Just in the most recent update uh, that we released in December 2021, uh, the species Maleo, which is a big chicken-like bird that lays one of the largest eggs for body size of any bird and then just abandons them in volcanic soil for the chick to hatch some 90 days later, entirely capable of flight. There was a lot of concern about the species disappearing from large areas. Wherever there is a threatened bird, there's pretty much always a small group of people that if they know about it, care about it, and will try to do something to prevent bad things from happening to it. Those relationships with people who actually carry out that field work on the ground are essential. That's the kind of most valuable information that we, uh, that we seek. We seek the key contacts who have access to the data and will provide that, you know, what is going on with this quite important species. Sadly, the numbers of birds coming each day to deposit eggs had fallen in most cases by more than 90% and it's resulted in that species being uplisted to critically endangered. Where a species has been assessed as newly critically endangered there is a clear need for action to take place. Maintaining large enough protected areas that have the actual security of not just being designated but having a cessation of trapping, of hunting and exploitation of these nest sites. My name's Lucy Haskell and I work as a research assistant for the State of the World's Birds project. The Red List data also tell us what the main threats are that are driving those population declines in birds. The top three threats to the world's birds are the expansion and intensification of agriculture, deforestation and hunting and trapping. Agriculture is the largest threat to the world's birds. The amount of land taken over by agriculture has increased significantly over the last few centuries. Uh, and on top of that, agriculture has also become much more intensive, with focus being on producing as much food as possible for the human population. And that has led to farmland habitats being much less suitable for bird species. As a result of that, we have seen a decline in farmland bird populations worldwide. I'm Tris Hansen, I'm a senior science officer at BirdLife International. BirdLife science doesn't just reveal the scale and severity of the biodiversity crisis, but it also tells us what we need to do about it. And because of our science, there are many species that have been saved from extinction, and many of the most important places for biodiversity around the world have been identified and protected. So faced with the tragic loss of albatrosses and other seabirds to accidental bycatch in fisheries, BirdLife developed and tested and deployed a number of measures, including redesigned longline hooks and modified nets. And through these was able to all but eliminate this kind of tragic death across a number of the world's fisheries. So our science demonstrates that conservation works. Between 21 and 32 bird species would have gone extinct in recent decades were it not for the conservation action that they received. And that means the overall extinction rate would have been three to four times higher without conservation action. Saving nature is not cheap. A decade ago, BirdLife scientists estimated that it would cost $76 billion a year to effectively safeguard a global network of the most important sites for nature. But it should be seen as an investment, not a bill. And it's an incredibly effective investment when you consider the value of the goods and services that nature provides to us. And one estimate put that sum at $33 trillion a year. And it's also trivial by comparison to some other things that we spend money on. For example, the annual global consumer spending on soft drinks is five times as high. Surely safeguarding our natural heritage is worth more than a load of cans of fizzy drink. 